Uh, so again, Rahul and the Hatchery for hosting us here today. Uh, and I also want to thank the Hatchery for being such an important part of the startup community and for helping San Francisco businesses start and grow here in San Francisco. Um, our first speaker is Mayor Lee. Um, he's been an, a strong advocate of open data, both in his current position and also historically as the uh, city administrator. And he's going to be sharing with you some really exciting announcements and his vision for open data. Mayor? Hi. Good morning. Uh, welcome again to Innovation Month in San Francisco. Uh, it's great to be here. And as you know, uh, I've been working really hard with uh, organizations like SF City and Code for America and others to make sure that we keep uh, being leaders in technology and celebrating our status, but also implementing the programs to help us continue that very nice title we have, the innovation capital of the world. Uh, and I am uh, here today uh, in collaboration with Board President David Chu and so many others from our Committee on Information Technology, SPUR, our different various uh, city departments, uh, really trying to improve on what we've done already. You know, back in 2009, uh, then Mayor Gavin Newsom, uh, to the light of all of us, had introduced uh, that we ought to really establish some guidelines to open up our city's data. And then a year later, uh, the board uh, blessed legislation, the, the first open data legislation in San Francisco that made us cutting edge throughout the country to first come out and say to everybody in the public, to people who wanted to create businesses, wanted to look at the city with kind of an open invitation to involve themselves with what the city had. And part of that uh, really uh, neat understanding was that we were holding on to so much of our own data in our own silos, with our own very focused obligations that we had, and not realizing that if we had released that data to the public, we could really allow them to help us create even more efficient government, along with some very good entrepreneurial uh, efforts that are reflected in today's announcements and some of our partners that are here today. Uh, so three years later, after announcing this and after doing the first uh, generation of open uh, data legislation, uh, OpenSF is still uh, very vigorous, and we want to do even more. And so we've teamed up with, again, uh, Board President David Chu, who's been uh, very uh, personally involved uh, with this and helping us and guide us with his knowledge, having been a small business owner himself, with how we can do even better. And today we're announcing actually two areas of improvements to our piece of legislation that I think will get people even more excited. The first is uh, after a couple of years of uh, opening up some of the data streams in our city and seeing how uh, this data had already started. Some companies, some entrepreneurs develop applications, uh, helped us already with identifying some uh, additional needs in the city and involving more people. Uh, we want to do even more along that line, and so uh, this legislation will allow us to establish, along with the best practices that are going on in New York, Chicago, and, and uh, the Sunlight Foundation, and that is to create a position in the city, uh, basically establishing a data officer, an open data officer for the city. Somebody that's gonna help uh, Jay Nath. Jay is kind of like our external uh, uh, innovation officer. He's helping me connect up all the time with all of the different uh, companies in the city that are uh, establishing and creating things. But I need somebody on the inside. We have a 60 uh, department bureaucracy uh, they're still working in a lot of different silos, and one of the things that we still have to do is get them on a higher level of sharing their data. So establishing a chief data officer for the city uh, that will work with all the different departments, establish some additional standards for them uh, to create uh, pinpoints uh, in every department of what their data is, what they may not be aware of that they're collecting or that we have in our computers or in our departments, and allowing that data to flow out, uh, this will be a good addition and a great improvement. Uh, it is uh, part of the best practices that we're learning across the country that if we establish uh, a data persons, persons that will uh, really look for opportunities and establish them with the departments and bring more data out, uh, that'll, be, that'll improve our city's performance. The other uh, rollout that we're having today is you know, government, uh, for the last three years, our government has really been on both the pressure point and I think 
uh, now realizing uh, a tremendous opportunity to uh, allow our data to go out, why not also, in return, ask for companies who are also collecting data to share that with city government? That's another great exchange that we have. And I know there's a lot of companies out there that do collect a lot of data, whether they're your credit card companies, your, your uh, banks, and so forth. If there's a way uh, that their data can come to us, it might very well be the grounds for even better public service for all of our different departments, whether we're talking about health or sports or, or kinds of things that our public would use. And uh, I want to serve up an example. Uh, there's been a company here uh, in San Francisco called uh, Motion Loft. And they have uh, uh, been creating sensors in various parts of our neighborhoods. In fact, I think they've covered some 18 different neighborhoods in our city with thousands of different sensors to track pedestrians, vehicles. Uh, maybe later on they'll, they'll, uh, they'll tag uh, bicycle traffic. And that data uh, in the various neighborhoods uh, have, uh, I think, been incredible for their company uh, to launch and to work in collaboration with other companies to see how movement in the city can help us establish patterns, trends, and other things. And they're going to share that data with us. And I, I believe uh, that data is going to be invaluable to us as we figure out challenges like the small businesses along uh, West Portal or in Terraville, along 3rd Street, who see their vacancies, and then they ask the mayor, how can your invest in neighborhood strategy work a little better with us to attract people to come and, and uh, be customers in our neighborhood, uh, coffee shops, restaurants, salons, and other things? How can we do that? And we've always scratched our heads saying, well, you, you, you got to kind of do it yourself. You got to create your ideas yourself. And now we're saying, well, maybe there is data out there that can help establish some best practices, can help maybe uh, quicken the ideas of what might be more attracted to our smaller neighborhoods. Well, this is the kind of data out there, uh, analytics, if you will, the analytical models that are being created by our local San Francisco companies like Motionloft and others, uh, who are using this data, yet can share it with the government, as Motionloft has agreed to do today, as part of yet another exciting phase. And uh, you ought not to uh, be surprised when we ask some of the larger companies and suggest to them that we can be a better city if they share their data through uh, Data SF with us. And if we can then download it and have it available to everybody else, I think that that would be a great combination. These are a couple of the uh, improvements that we wanted to announce today in our open data legislation in collaboration again with our board, but also in collaboration with Code for America, who's been working with us with uh, SF City, as I mentioned earlier, SPUR, our Department of Technology, uh, our Committee on Information Technology, and then we have an open data working group, which really tries to get volunteers from the different departments uh, to work together and see what other kinds of uh, data analytics that we could provide uh, to the public. I want to uh, just say uh, today, you're going to hear some demonstration projects that are already started uh, with our open data. Again, as a way to celebrate uh, Innovation Month, uh, not only are we opening up uh, different companies throughout uh, San Francisco, but we want to also encourage examples like we're going to be announcing today where uh, Yo Yoshida from Appalachia is working with Phil Ginsburg on creating a smartphone application that will provide data to people about where our small parks are, where the events are happening, uh, what is the cost, what, how to get there uh, in the hours that they're operating. Uh, a smartphone application for all of our events in recreation and park department, that to me is going to be invaluable to visitors and to our neighborhoods. Uh, Bronwyn Agrius, uh, who is working with us on uh, data information from neighborhoods in our city, growth trends, that kind of data certainly is going to help a department like city planning who is trying to kind of figure out where are the new neighborhoods in our city? What do we do from a planning, a zoning uh, 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 effort, uh, prioritizing? Is it small businesses down on Pier 70 area? Or do we go high rises uh, downtown? What kind of people trends and business trends 
and constituent trends are happening in our neighborhoods, that data is there to be shared with our city planning so we can plan for the future and make sure we're not planning to uh, limit uh, the kind of growth that we want to encourage. And then uh, I've got, we've got another exciting one. I, Chris Hogg is uh, here, uh, and uh, the company 100 Plus is here today. They have worked on, uh, for many years, uh, health-related data. And uh, they're going to roll out the opportunity where people can get information about what exists in our city that they can utilize or go to that will affect their health in a positive way. For me, I'm looking at an apparatus that will be on my wrist that will tell me every time I should go to the golf, the golf course. <laughs> because that's where my exercise happened. The more I walk on the golf course like I did 18 holes yesterday morning at 6 a.m., the more healthy I'm going to be in the long run. Uh, but it's things like that where people don't know there, there might be an existent uh, location uh, that they don't know about that could be uh, related to their health, and they could have that instantaneously. Uh, these are just three of some of, I think, just hordes of examples that uh, when we allow uh, data analytics, and this is really, to me, a uh, technology geek's really dream, is to have all of this data available so that we can mine them in different ways, in very creative ways. And I, I want to say, again, uh, as someone who's worked in government for 23 years, I've been at those departments like DPW and others where we think in one dimension. This is where we clean the streets. This is how often we clean it. This is when we tell the cars to move off. And this is what DPW does, and it does it pretty well within that constraint. If you shared that data with companies who are looking at where do people live, how do, what are their patterns on, we can get a lot more creative. When we open our data, when we suggest to departments that they can work in collaboration, when we open up and establish within our city contracts that the companies that do service for us do not own the data that they generate from us, that they will have a contractual obligation to share that with the city so that we can mine that to the rest of the city, that's advance of opportunities for everybody. I know at the heart of sharing this data, there's going to be a lot more jobs created a lot more people out there inventing new ways to establish small businesses that will improve the way we live and work and play in the city. And as we look forward to great events, like a Super Bowl host or something like that, we're going to be able to give people a really rich amount of uh, programs that they could access from here to Santa Clara to San Jose. We can act regionally with our data and then we can join and continue to be in the great city of San Francisco. So I want to thank all of the people, all of the different starting up companies here and those that are inventing with us. Thank them for celebrating Innovation Month in such a ex exemplary way. Uh, and I think we're going to have a lot more to announce before this month is out, including on our way to the World Series. Thank you very much. Yeah. And if I may introduce our partner in crime here, Board President David Chu, uh, who's also going to be complimenting us with all of his efforts at the board. Come on up, David. Good morning. I am incredibly excited to be here today for a couple of reasons. First of all, the hatchery is one of my favorite places in the city. There is truly a beehives of activity of the newest innovations that San Francisco will be famous for. I also love the fact that just a couple of blocks from here is where our San Francisco Giants are moving on to the World Series. But just in this room, all of you are giants in making sure that San Francisco is the world champion when it comes to innovation. 13 years ago, I, like all of you, started a company. I started an IT, a technology company in the 1.0 world. It was a company that created technology to connect citizens better with government. I ran it for almost nine years. And when I was elected to office four years ago, I was unfortunately more surprised than I wanted to be about how, f how far behind San Francisco government was. This was very 2008, 2009. 
But I'm really proud of the leaps and bounds that we have taken as a city. I was proud in 2010 to help move forward legislation to really bring together city departments to work in a coordinated way with our Committee on Information Technology to help create a chief information officer position for the city. I was also proud to work with then Mayor Newsom in passing the first generation of open data legislation that we have. But as our civil grand jury in June pointed out, our IT in San Francisco is still in need of a culture shock. And this is where all of us come in today. We have 200 data sets that have already been put out there. But by and large, the data sets put out by city government are data sets that I think show us in a very positive light. From my perspective, it's important for us to keep on pushing data sets that allow us to deal with the sometimes imperfections in city government, to figure it out where it is that we need to take risks, where we can be more entrepreneurial, where we can be more transparent, and frankly, more accountable to all of you as the residents and as our customers here in city government. And this is why I'm proud tomorrow to help move forward legislation that my staff has been working closely with Jay Nath and Mayor Leon that will really do three things. First of all, it will create a chief data officer because we need one person who is responsible and accountable for moving forward our open data agenda. Secondly, we're gonna require every department in the city to have a representative who's responsible for data. So you can go to our transit agency, our police department, any of our 50 plus departments and know who can help you get the data that we need. Thirdly, we need to make sure that we have common standards so that as this data is presented, all of us can know how to use it, how to play with it, and move things forward. Now, I wanna take this moment to issue a challenge to the smartest and the brightest in San Francisco here in this room. There are three ideas that I have been working on for the last year that I would love to see potentially in a hackathon or with the exercises that you do in your own companies to help move our city forward. The first has to do with a favorite topic of most San Franciscans. How many of you have had your car towed in San Francisco? How many of you have not been as happy as you wanted to be about that experience? So last year, I had hundreds of residents who were unhappy about the fact that there were special events that San Francisco will often do, whether it be the America's Cup, a Giants game, Sunday streets. They would wake up on a Sunday morning, look for the car that is typically legally parked on their street and find that they can't get it back but for a $500 fine. Last year, I proposed to the public that if your community could help us figure out an app so that if I provided my cell phone to city government, we could let you know if the street cleaning is gonna happen tomorrow. We proposed this last year. I know Mayor Lee was very supportive of it. We're still waiting for this to happen. Idea number one. Idea number two. Many of my constituents ask me, David, can you tell us where every single dollar in city government goes? Whether it goes to someone's salary, whether it goes to a nonprofit, whether it goes to a company that's providing goods and services to our city. Last year, I proposed an open budget application so that we could drill down and know where every single penny of city government is being spent. I wanna thank our budget director who's here, our city controller, we are working on this, but we are still months away from getting the data that we need to provide this information to you. A third idea, I wanna thank our Rec and Park Department. You're gonna be hearing a little bit from the director of that department, Phil Ginsburg, about the newest application that Appalicious has helped us with. And I'm very, very proud of what Rec and Park is doing. This is something that I've been discussing with Mr. Ginsburg uh, for some months now. Um, but in addition to the information that you can now get about where our parks are, I think we need to take this one step further. We need to allow folks to do the online transactions that allow people to make reservations at the barbecue pit or at that picnic table. These are three of hundreds of ideas that I have heard over the last few years. My guess is you and your heads have the solutions to them today. And Mayor Lee and I are looking forward with this legislation, with all of you, to figuring out how to make our city government the best 21st century city government that we have in the entire world. So thank you for being here. And it is my pleasure to introduce our mayor's budget director, Kate Howard, who in addition to helping to balance multi-billion bu multi multi dollar budgets every year, uh, she will tell you about our plans around our chief data officer. Thank you so much for being here.
Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm Kate Howard. I'm the mayor's budget director. I'm here just to talk briefly about uh, the really exciting opportunity that I think is going to be coming up in the city, which is the announcement of our new chief data officer. Um, some people may think that the budget office is mostly bean counters, but really um, our office is focused on how do we make government more efficient, how do we make it more effective, and how do we use information to make better decisions. And I think that's why the mayor has asked that the chief data officer sit in my office, so that they have access to financial information, as well as a team of people who are already inclined to work on uh, uh, analytical problems. So um, as mayor, the mayor uh, and board president Chu indicated, we'll be hiring a chief data officer. We're looking for the best and brightest people. So uh, if you know of people or if you yourself are interested, find me after and I'd love to talk to you. Um, really, the role of this person is to help us figure out how do we build on what we've already done in terms of open data? Um, how do we make government more transparent? What kinds of standards are needed to make sure that um, data is accessible both within the city, between agencies, and also to the private sector and the public. Um, and I think they, th this person, this data officer, really will help us do what many of you in the private sector are already doing well, which is using that information to make better decisions. And that's really what our office is all about, and that's really why we need this person to help us understand what data is out there and how do we um, utilize that in conjunction with the other information that we already have. Um, you can send a tweet. So we're finalizing the job announcement now, but if you're interested um, or you know someone who's interested, um, you can send a tweet to SFMOCI um, and we'll be posting the job announcement there. So thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the general manager of our rec and park department who's done some great partnerships around open data, uh, Phil Ginsburg. Do I need to talk into this thing or can you all hear me? All right, I'll talk it in the mic. Hi, I'm Phil Ginsburg. I'm the general manager of your recreation and park department, and I, I really couldn't be happier. The recreation and park department is a, a city agency that historically has suffered from maybe the worst website and some of the worst technology in government. And over the last uh, few years, we've worked really hard to improve the park users' experience uh, through the use of, of technology. And I want to start out, before we talk a little bit about the app, saying a, a few thank yous. I really want to thank Mayor Lee for his incredible commitment to innovation and technology and, frankly, the Recreation and Park Department. I want to thank Supervisor Chu, who's also been a leader uh, both in the parks world and in the technology world. Um, SF City, who's uh, really been a, a driving force behind helping government think about uh, uh, new ways, new and improved ways, maybe for some of you they're old ways by now, but new and improved ways for, uh, for government to reach users of our programs and services. Uh, and I want to save the last special thank you for uh, Yo Yoshida and the folks from Appalicious. Um, this thing is awesome. It is. This past year, the Trust for Public Land, which is a national parks organization, determined that San Francisco, which has 4,000 acres of open space and over 220 parks, over 15% of the city's land is open space. The Trust for Public Land said we have the best urban park system in America. And the challenge for us is making sure that all of our park users understand all of the wonderful things in our park system and know how to use our parks to tailor to their own specific experience. Um, as diverse as this city is, there are hundreds if not thousands of different ways that people like to use and enjoy our parks. And in this, in this app, uh, there is information about our parks, about our playgrounds, about our ball fields, about our trails, about our community gardens, about the 300 pieces of public art in our jurisdiction. You can reserve a picnic bench. There are, uh, there's a running feed of news and events. You can volunteer in our park system by using this app. You can uh, donate to the Recreation and Park Department, a very worthy cause, I might add, using this app. And you can find all kinds of incredible information. And so we are just so thrilled, and I wanted to give just such a big thank you to Appalicious. Um, you know, we've been trying to figure out how to make it work in a world of declining resources, and literally, Appalicious knocked on our door. And they said, we want to help. And you know, we like to say around here that in the 21st century, government can't do it alone anymore. We need partners, and boy, did we, found, we find a great one. This, uh, this platform is really going to help uh, uh, fulfill the incredible potential of our park users. 96% of San Franciscans live within a 10-minute walk of a park. 
which is an amazing, amazing, amazing stat. And now we have a tool to make it easier and more enjoyable for people to get what they need out of our parks. Um, so again, I'm very grateful. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Sean Stasio, who is here from my staff, who spent hours and hours and hours working with Yo Yoshida. <laughs> At the, end of the, at the end of the day, you know, this is about content. And, and Sean really partnered with, with Appalicious, who have came up with such a great idea. And we really believe it is one of the most uh, powerful mobile applications, certainly in the parks world and, and maybe in government. And right now, it's, it's primarily focused on information with a little bit of reservations. But it's going to be able to do so much more over time as we continue to, uh, to evolve as a department. So love your parks download one of these things and uh, let me introduce Yo Yoshida. And let me just say to all of you out here, keep doing what you're doing because with your help, you are really making uh, uh, government better. So I wanted to say thank you to, to the hatchery and everybody in this room. Yo. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you, Phil Ginsburg. Uh, thank you, Jay Nath and uh, the hatchery for hosting us. I use open data. Uh, our company was founded three years ago using open data. We are one of the first sustainable companies to use open data and be sustainable innovation, meaning we can generate revenue and keep mobile applications for government uh, going. Uh, we are really excited to be here today. Uh, this is our official launch of Appalicious. Uh, I would like to thank our team, uh, Kevin O'Connor, Eddie Abiano, Rick Robbins, most of all Fabrice Armisen, uh, for my CTO and co-founder. Uh, this was a very long, long journey with the city. Uh, but we had the help of leaders like Phil Ginsburg, Mayor Lee, uh, Jay Nath, driving behind the scenes uh, the efforts for business to work with government. Uh, and I think we've accomplished that with this, with this unique partnership moving forward. Uh, we're excited. Now there's cross-department uh, collaboration with uh, the San Francisco Arts, uh, with the San Francisco Public Art, which has now been, thanks to Sean Stasio working late last night, uh, putting the public arts into Golden Gate Park. This is providing access, it's providing efficiency, uh, and it's providing new revenue streams and opportunities for the city of San Francisco and other departments. Uh, we would, we, we're really excited to be here, and I thank you all again for this opportunity uh, to be able to innovate, uh, to be able to work with the city of San Francisco, uh, and have this in incredible opportunity to be here at the Hatchery, launching our application and our company. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Yo. So San Francisco has been a leader in open data for the past three years nationally. In 2009, we launched our open data initiative, one of the first cities to do so. In 2010, we partnered with the White House to launch Open 3 one API, the first ever read-write API for cities. We now have over 40 cities that have joined us. In 2011, we partner partnered with Gray Area Foundation on a series of hackathons that had over 500 attendees generated over 10,000 hours of civic engagement and created nearly 30 applications, all being powered by open data. And now in 2012, we have our legislation that you've heard about. As you heard, we announced a chief data officer. We have a network of open data coordinators within each agency. And these, and these coordinators, their primary responsibility is to provide insight, is to provide transparency into the data sets that they manage. And that's really important. We want to make sure that you guys have a clear understanding in our community about the data that we manage, so you can tell us where we should be going next in terms of opening up our data sets. Um, we also are doing some structural changes so that open data is really the default position for our city. We're making sure that data belongs to our city, not the vendor. And second, we're making sure that any software that we buy or build has a public API or some equivalent. We don't want to be held hostage by a vendor or by technology. This data belongs to our constituents. We're simply stewards of it. 